Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We love being encouraged to live out our faith in Jesus by hearing the stories of women in our church community. We are so glad that you're here. Friends can bring out the best in each other. And that's exactly what we see with Maria and Sammy. You will smile a lot as you hear their laughs, but don't miss the wisdom they share about vulnerability, insecurity, conflict, and especially life at the B table. I guarantee you will enjoy and be personally challenged by Camille's conversation with Sammy and Maria. Hi, and welcome to Encourage and Equipped. You guys, I have a really fun episode today. I have two friends here, Maria and Sammy, and we're going to talk about their lives and their friendship, and it's going to be wonderful. So we start our episodes off every time by saying, what is a small thing that's brought you joy recently? And this time, I'm going to go first because that's just what we're doing today. Something small that has brought me joy recently is that my kiddos are like obsessed with catching lizards okay one of my kiddos is oh, like you know the like one? the geckos and like you meant which kid yes. i thought you meant which lizard <laughs> that too if there's multiple i need to know about them as well <laughs> so my youngest simon is catching lizards linus could care less but mm. the big green lizards and like they've been catching a lot of them and like yesterday they were Okay, this isn't great, but like Simon threw one on Linus. <laughs> it's not, it's not great for sure, the lizard. Brothers. But yeah. it was adorable at the moment. And it was like hearing their tiny little like squeals was adorable. So a small thing. Poor lizard. That's really sweet. But sweet boys. Okay. Aww. Oh, that's sweet. Sammy, what about you? I think just the fall weather and the changing, I feel like it's bringing me so much life. I'm putting out the pumpkins and mm, it's true. changing. Yeah. yeah, I love that kind of stuff. That's so I fun. do. <laughs> That's sweet. How many pumpkins have you put out? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I haven't counted Lots. them. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry. I was expecting like one or two. But oh, oh, no, 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 no way more than, than that. that. Oh, okay. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Maria, what about yeah. you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm pleased to tell you that we now are cat owners. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm going to scream on this podcast. I know. Are we allowed cats. to scream? Is that allowed? I'm trying yeah. to not scream into the microphone, but I love cats. <laughs> so oh well. much. Okay. Well. Yeah. You're in for a treat. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. His name is Kitty Cohen. <laughs> Kid, short for Kitty Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sammy's cat. My childhood so, cat. The story. Yeah. yeah. The story yes. is that Sammy does didn't want pets. <laughs> and yes. I have always wanted a pet <laughs> in our home. And then her childhood cat is now living with us. <gasps> yeah. Thanks to Crazy's my BS. parents, Steve and Sherilyn. Shout out to Steve and Sherilyn for making my <laughs> dreams come true. Thank Yay! you. <laughs> okay. But were you like ready and accepting? No, <laughs> no. That's the problem. <laughs> Steve and Sherilyn just dropped this cat off at our house because oh my, my dad was here visiting for the weekend on his way to go visit my brother and literally just dropped the cat off and said, it lives with you now. Kitty boy, <laughs> your new home. This is my dream come true. And, and not yours. No, no they yeah. have been planning this for months and they just they, didn't tell me. No, not they me. Had, oh, no, no, like, no, no, oh, Maria. And they didn't tell Maria. no. Yeah, no. they didn't tell me, didn't tell Maria, didn't tell our landlord. And oh. yeah, now we have a kitty boy who's living yeah. with us and we have three months supply of food that they had delivered to our house. That is excellent. So, <laughs> Steve and Shirley. It was the best. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Just gonna mm-hmm. make a cat come mom. over. And <laughs> yes, see him. Please he do. is pretty cute. He's very friendly. Yeah. He's a little shy. Yeah, but he'll come out. I'm talking about him like I've known him my whole life. When well, I haven't, yeah. Sammy has. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you have. But I like now. to feel that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that he's also your pet. Yeah, I've but, known him his whole Texas life. His whole <laughs> Texas life. You two have so much wisdom on how to navigate relationships that we're going to hear later on in this episode, but I want us to start with the fact that you have been so intentional about observing the giftings of each other and really understanding who one another is. So when we had a conversation prior, you two had this fun idea of sharing some of your favorite things about each other, which really I think is turning into this idea that you're noticing each other's gifts. 
So I thought that was a great example of what is healthy and helpful and bringing that vulnerability and intimacy into our friendships. So we're going to start with this. Oh, well, I have a lot of things that I admire about Maria, but the first is she's honest. She's mm-hmm. very honest and she has a way of telling you the really hard thing about yourself or just in general, but in a really loving way and in a way that's like, I love you enough and I care about you enough to tell you this really hard, honest thing that nobody else is going to tell you. Mm. And she's really super good at that. That's um, she is truly so open. She Maria is like one of the most authentic people I've ever met. She is just like open and authentically in every room that she walks into, she's going to be 100% Maria. She's not mm-hmm. going to hide or try to be something that she's not. She just is that. And it's so, I think, refreshing for people. And, and I think it makes people like want, it invites people because it's hospitable. It makes them want to be like who they are because she's just so authentic and real with mm-hmm. just who she is. Um, and we're supposed to narrow it down to three. But I would say the third is that she's one of the most inclusive people I've ever met. She is all, like honestly always thinking about small things, about how she can include somebody else, how she can make them feel connected and welcomed and a part of the group. And it's just something that I think she really naturally is wired that way. But I mm-hmm. feel like it really – all these things I feel like just really reflect the heart of who God is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. she's – Great. That's and, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Dude. Mm-hmm. That was so that kind. was really kind. Maria. Dang. <laughs> okay. Wow. Honey <laughs> uh, roasted food. I was so flattered. Wow. Well, honey roasted, roasted on the podcast. Oh my gosh. How fun. Okay. First thing I love about Sammy is that she thinks really deeply and she asks a lot of really deep questions. And it's not out of a um like an analytical or critical spirit or anything, it's because she genuinely cares about you. Like she wants to know these things about you and she Mm -hmm. wants you to feel loved and included and welcomed in things. And so she asks all these questions that like, I, I honestly sometimes don't even feel the boldness to do so. I feel like Sammy will ask things that are so bold and so like caring and loving that, um, that like, I'm afraid to be that vulnerable sometimes. So I've learned a lot about that Mm -hmm. from you. Second thing is that Sammy is very fun and she points out the joys of every single thing in life. Like, I feel like I've learned more about celebration living with Sammy of just like small things of being excited about fall because she's not just like, oh, I have pumpkins. She's like came home and was like, here are my pumpkins. (laughs) We're placing them everywhere. You want to join? (laughs) Yeah. And it's like that, that kind of stuff. You just, it's just hard. Life is too hard, you know? Mm -hmm. And Sammy just brings the fun and the joy into things. And she doesn't, I don't know, she doesn't dwell in all of those things all the time. She cares a lot about celebrating. Mm -hmm. And then um, also with that, she can get anybody rallied rallied around a vision. If she's passionate about it and she goes for it, it's like her joy and her fun that's like contagious. And it causes you to be like, oh, I care about this too. Yes. You know, and you may not have cared about it before, but now you see the importance of it and you're like, oh, I got to do something. You know, <laughs> like oh my goodness. you feel this whole passion and you, her joy and fun and energy is just really contagious. So, um, yeah. Okay. Last one is, um, I read this quote, And uh, I actually cried when I read it because I was like, this is literally Sammy. Oh my gosh. And, um, and this is in a different context. Um, It's in, it's from the book called Adorning the Dark by Andrew Peterson. Mm -hmm. We're reading it. I'm reading for a class. Um, And it's about artists and like artistry and the theology of making and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it says, um, all artists need resonators. They need someone who gets what you're trying to do, who's moved by your work, and will encourage you to keep fighting when the battle is long. And I, I like cried when I read that because it's not just like artists, but like Sammy does that with the gospel. Mm -hmm. Like she hears it and it deeply moves her. And then she just like runs towards it and she gets everybody involved. And she can do that with like your giftings and she'll sit and listen to you and like gets just as passionate about the things that God's placed in you and in your life. So anyways, those are those are my three. Oh, I know, right? So sweet. Even so if sweet. it's debatable. Honey roasted. <laughs> Honey roasted. Boom roasted. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sweetest. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so listener, if you're like me and you're thinking like, how, like, how do they have such a sweet friendship? Like mm-hmm. that, like there's a depth to that that comes, first of all, 
only because of Christ, like mm. because both yeah. of you are pursuing a relationship with Christ and pushing each other toward that. So I know that is like first and foremost the thing. But also I think probably there's a lot of like vulnerability and like a willingness to be not only vulnerable with each other, but also a willingness to be like wrong or mm. hurt or to engage in conflict or to like really spur each other on in a way that doesn't always look appealing to us like mm -hmm. at first glance. Yeah. But when you are with somebody who is a true friend like in Christ who you know values like your sanctification, then it's not so scary and it's not so like bad looking. It actually looks really good. So mm -hmm. can you just tell me a little bit about like being vulnerable with each other and maybe like a willingness to endure like rejection, especially if you're thinking about in the beginning of your friendship? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, I I just think rejection is kind of a part of life a little mm -hmm. bit. And um I don't I don't think we always kind of embrace rejection enough. Mm. Sometimes like the part of that is embracing it and being like, okay, now what? For example, okay. So I went to this event for a weekend one time and you know I am the new person there and everybody mm. kind of knows each other and everything. Lunch break comes around. I'm like, this oh, is terrifying. This yeah. is the worst. I know. Yeah, I'm like, here we it go. Like, it I'm is. about to, like, what's going to happen? And yep. so I'm kind of prepping. The day before, we all kind of went to lunch. So I'm kind of prepping. I have my lunch that I brought. And I'm like, oh, oh. I'm just going to, you know, like, I'm going to have to reject all these people. You know, they're going to all, oh, they're going to ask me, wants to, lunch, me to come. You know, <laughs> all this stuff, you know, whatever. And I'm just kind of prepping, like, well, I brought my lunch. I need to be responsible, whatever. And then, of course, everybody just mass exodus is out. And mm. I, I am sitting here eating my lunch alone, you know, mm. the sad packed yeah. lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, you know, and it's as pitiful as it sounds like <laughs> it really is. But I feel like for me, I've experienced in my life that there are two ways I can respond to that. Mm. The first one is like out of myself and in anger. And I could be mad at the people who left me or why wouldn't, weren't they more inviting or why, whatever. Uh, or I can, part two of that is I can be mad at myself and mm -hmm. I can start saying what's wrong with me and I need to be more likable and I need to be X, Y, Z. Or option two is I can take every negative, hard, tough emotion that I'm feeling and I can just embrace it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel my way through it. And I go, yeah, I feel really lonely mm -hmm. and I feel really rejected. I feel forgotten. Mm -hmm. I feel like you know, all of those things that come with rejection. And then you take it to the Lord and you say, what do you want me to do with that? Yeah. Mm. And I, in my experience, when I choose option two, in this, also, just to be clear, in this scenario, I definitely chose option one and felt really convicted about <laughs> maybe I should have chosen option two. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear. But uh, you can take, when you do option two and you take it to the Lord and you say, what do you want me to do with that? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of the ten, out of 10, I feel drawn or like I feel filled to the brim with compassion towards people. Mm, I I start good. to be like, I hand it over to the Lord and I say, what do you want me to do with that? And mm -hmm. all of those things still, still kind of sit with me and I still am like working through that. And when they come back from lunch, you know, I start looking around and I see like, I'm filled to the brim with compassion. And I see mm. this one guy that just doesn't look very happy. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if that was a good experience for him. Because mm. if I'm thinking about it that way, there are times that I've gone with groups where I wasn't necessarily rejected, but I felt just as alone yeah. and I felt just as forgotten, you yeah. know? And, um, and I moved to like, I moved with compassion towards him mm -hmm. or I moved with compassion towards these people of why do they feel so scared that mm -hmm. they don't want to invite me in, you yeah. know, yeah. or maybe it just is not even personal. Like maybe it's just, they forgot or they don't even think about it or whatever, but whatever that is like me embracing that and handing it over to the Lord and saying, what do you want me to do with that? Like, mm -hmm. you know, is really the best way to go because it moves us towards the heart of the gospel and yeah. going towards people yeah. and being around people and being like moved by compassion towards mm -hmm. people. Um, and I think a lot of times we don't want to embrace that because it's really hard to sit with like, oh, wow, they forgot about me. Yeah. Or it's really yeah. hard yeah. to sit with all of that. Yeah. But um, it's also 
the most sanctifying, I mm. think. Um, and recognizing that we have we serve Jesus, who was all those things. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. rejected, and he sits with you in that, and he mm-hmm. he knows exactly what that feels like. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's so good, Maria. Yeah, and that just speaks to what an includer she is. Yeah. That she's even thinking in the midst of her feeling alone. That she's thinking it's like the switch from oh, I'm feeling alone to other people are also feeling alone. I can be part of the solution and invite them in and yeah. invite them into, hey, come and be a part of this group and yeah. you're wanted here. And mm-hmm. that's so good. Yeah. yeah. And I think the problem too is like if you don't mm-hmm. embrace all of the emotions and the negative parts that come with that, uh, you, you'll you always be scared of it. Mm-hmm. Like you'll never want to go forward to other mm-hmm. people again because mm-hmm. it can just close you off. It's yeah. like you become angry and hurt and sad yeah. and either towards them or towards yourself. And, yeah. You know, and when you – when you embrace all of that and when you feel all of that, it 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 just kind of it brings you closer to the heart of God. Just like it you're does. saying, like yeah, that's what Jesus felt. And yeah. To partake in that and say, okay, you're having me feel this for a reason. Mm. What do you want me to do with that? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And that he sees you in that place. I feel like that always changes me too, that he sees me in that place, even if it doesn't feel like, okay, these other people mm-hmm. aren't seeing me, but he does. And yeah. that's the God that he is, that mm-hmm. he sees all those people. Mm-hmm. And when you're seeing, saying that, I'm thinking too, like, oh, I think something I struggle with a lot is like being vulnerable with other people mm-hmm. and that I don't want to experience that. I don't want to experience the rejection. So let me just close off and let me not share myself and let me not invite other people in mm-hmm. because like she said, I'm scared. And, but I think that is only ever shutting them out too, you know? Mm, and yeah. it doesn't make you feel any more secure at the table because you're not inviting other people in. Yes. You know, it yeah. just makes you feel more. But I think it is switching from that, oh, I feel this way to to being more aware of the other people around mm-hmm. and being aware that you can be a part of, like, inviting them in and being hospitable to that. And, mm-hmm. yeah, that's so yeah. good. Mm-hmm. It takes a certain comfortability with – vulnerability and with yourself yeah Mm -hmm. to like embrace yourself too of like when you embrace the more and more you because you will experience rejection i mean yeah right mm -hmm. it's just gonna happen and so the more and more you like come to terms with that and you realize that it's not your fault or anybody else's fault yeah or maybe it is other people's fault and they really did purposely do it and it really was malicious you know yeah Yeah. um even then like clearly their hurt isn't with you Mm, you know like it's a and and if it is then there's something to like there's something to be said about approaching people and being like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. But most of the time, it's just people not knowing what to do with their own negative emotion yeah. and not knowing how to handle that. And it really kind of has nothing to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> so. yep. And it makes it lose some of its power. That's such yeah. a good way to put it, Maria, that like the rejection of me doesn't have to mean anything about me, mm-hmm. you know? Right. That's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've been talking a lot, women in the word, about how like when – Jesus was like accused of something like he didn't he didn't give a defense like yeah we don't always right. have to give a defense and it reminds mm-hmm. me of that feeling of like have I been hurt by this person and mm-hmm. what did like and it wasn't even anything I did mm-hmm. like yeah. I've got to go and tell them like I haven't done anything to you and you yeah. have really shut me out yeah but in all honesty like you're saying it really like the idea is not that we give a defense for why you should have included me. Mm. Yeah. The idea is that like we are all part of a broken world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be pain and rejection and lots of those things. And yeah. so trying to tune into the heart of God and figure out like, like you said, what are we going to do? What am I mm-hmm. going to do with that feeling? Yeah. And how yeah. am I best going to love this person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. if they've hurt me. Yeah. yeah. Sammy, you and I have talked a little bit about this too, this mm-hmm. idea of like really being secure in ourselves and mm. like that being the place from which we move into relationships. Yeah. Can you tell me more about, I know we talked about it specifically in reference to your professor, but talk to me about that. Yeah. I hate that I struggle with identity. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so basic. And I'm like, oh, I'm just another girl. <laughs> I hate it, but I do really struggle with it. And I feel like when I first came here, it was really hard for me in the residency because I saw all these other shining, beautiful stars, you know, and I'm like, I can see how they just are so gifted in ministry or just in general with people. And I really struggled to feel like, oh, 
what are my giftings? Like, gosh, I, I don't even, I feel like I don't have any. I feel like I don't know what they are. And yeah, one thing that my professor had said was like, oh, you know, you don't have to actually know what your giftings are because really they're not for you anyway. And if you knew them, you were probably just going to be prideful about them. That is such a slap mm-hmm. to the face. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I needed right? it. No, <laughs> me yeah. too. The slap you didn't know you needed. Yeah. <laughs> and and just the fact that, okay, your giftings weren't ever for you anyway. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you don't need to be prideful about them. They're for the body of Christ and they're for yeah. the edification of p- other people. Mm-hmm. And so that I just felt like gave me a lot of freedom to walk in that, oh, you know, I don't have to be like everybody else. I don't have to be gifted in the same way as Maria's is gifted. And really, mm-hmm. that speaks to this, like, the unity that we can have in the body of Christ, that we're better together because we're different, Mm -hmm. you know, and that I am not spontaneous, but Maria is, but that brings me so much joy and brings me, brings my life so much fullness to it Mm -hmm. that I don't have to look like other people. I don't have to even know necessarily what my giftings are because other people know what they are and other people can see them and they're for the edification of the body. And so that's part of our service even maybe to the body of Christ is serving the Lord in a way that maybe you wouldn't choose or maybe you wouldn't want, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something I feel like we can all struggle with a little bit of just envying other people's gifts or looking at other people and thinking, oh, I wish I could be more like that. I wish I could have that gifting. Ugh, you know, I don't want to be stuck back here in the kitchen doing the crock pot. But like some of those things, maybe that's how God has gifted you. And that's like a service and a joy should be to Mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I feel like gave me just a lot of freedom in that. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you guys always point everything back to the idea that like Whatever it is in the context of relationship with other people, like it comes back to the gospel Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. building up the body of Christ. Um, And I know that's part of what you guys do in your friendship and in your home, but also with your community around you. Um, So I'm shifting back a little bit to thinking about when you first moved in and like you're adjusting to your life as residents and you're like trying to build a network of friends or like Mm -hmm. some type of community. How did you go about doing that? Because I can't be the only one who is like, okay, like I dealt with like trying to find friends when I was a teenager Mm -hmm. and like a middle schooler (laughs) and then like in college and then, oh, Mm -hmm. like I'm 20 and now like I'm 40. It never ends. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it doesn't end. So like how do you you build community? Like what was it like for you when you built community here? Mm. Brick by brick. (laughs) So hard. It's true. Yeah. It's so weird. We kind of talked about this a little bit in our class today, but I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. Of like our, I feel like our professor had talked about how what you you can't just assume trust with people. Mm. You kind of have to build that now. Mm. And like maybe before there was kind of a oh, you're supposed to trust your authority or leadership or whatever. And I feel like it's very similar in friendships of like, Mm -hmm. you can't just assume that people know you and trust you and are like, cool with that, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So there is a level of building that has to happen that you have to realize that. And for you, like yourself, you know, but I think also it has a lot to do with vulnerability and being okay, being okay with being vulnerable with people and being okay with being rejected and realizing that like some people are just aren't your people and you can be friends with them and the level of friendship doesn't have to be this super deep thing. Yeah. You can have your like acquaintances, you have your friends, you have your good friends, you have your best friends, you know, like in all of those categories are okay. And something that we talked about earlier today too, is like, you need all of those categories. Yeah. Like if every Mm. friend that you had was just your best friend in the whole entire world, you'd be exhausted because there's a level of investment that comes with a best friend, you know? Yeah. Like you are committing to be a, being a part of their lives and being heavily invested in yeah. like they are heavily invested in you and a part of mm-hmm. your life. And you'd just be exhausted if like yeah, every yeah. person you ran and like came in contact with was your best friend, yeah. you know, but you need all types of friends of like your cut up and laugh friends mm-hmm. and you're like good friends that you feel comfortable sharing things with but aren't necessarily your besties, yeah. you know, all of that stuff. Like you need a myriad of people. And that's, I think, part of being part of the body of Christ, you know? Yeah. (laughs) But you have to be ready and willing to share yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Over and over and over again and then be rejected over and over and over again because Mm -hmm. it never ends. And it can get really discouraging, I feel like, especially Mm -hmm. if you move with me. We had just moved to a new city and we were – 
I feel like constantly inviting people over. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you kind of have to get over the fact that like, okay, other people aren't going to initiate with me. You have to take initiative Mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to say, okay, I'm going to be the initiator. I'm going to invite people over and I'm going to, just like Maria said, I'm going to invite them into this and invite them into something and then be okay if they reject you, you Mm -hmm. know, and don't Mm -hmm. take that personally, that that Mm -hmm. doesn't have to mean anything about you. That doesn't have to mean that they're a bad person or whatever. It can just mean that like, maybe they're not looking for that. Maybe they're not ready for that. And that's okay. I mean, but don't let that discourage Mm -hmm. you from keep trying and keep putting yourself out there and keep, because there are, because people are lonely and people want that. And, And people are looking for someone to invite them in. Yes. And we discovered that so much. Yeah. Like we cannot tell you how many times that we mm-hmm. just like threw a ragtag group of people together yeah. just to like have people over because we needed community. Yep. And people were like, I haven't been invited to something in <gasps> years. Yeah. What? Like, yeah. yes, it was crazy. And we were like, that's devastating. But yeah. it's all this like fear of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And yeah. what if I invite this person and then they don't like it? Or I am only going to invite the people I feel comfortable around. And, you know, yeah. and there's something yeah. to be said about like exclusivity isn't bad. Like there's a healthy amount of exclusivity that's good. At a certain mm-hmm. point, like Sammy and I can't call each other best friends unless we make like the investment to do so, which yeah. means like there's some exclusivity of it. I have yeah. to hang out with Sammy one-on-one in order to like have a friendship with her, you know? Yeah. But, you know, there's there's a times and places for both things. And yeah. if you're not ever reaching out to people and you're not ever trying to meet them where they at and you don't have this... A lot of times it's just you don't have an understanding of like they, they're probably going to – there's some people that are going to say no. Mm-hmm. And some people who have different expectations as friends that you can't meet or you mm-hmm. don't want to meet, you yeah, know, <laughs> or vice versa. Right. Where like yeah. that you may have some that they're like, yeah, I don't really think I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but either way, you have to be vulnerable enough and like willing to face the rejection yeah. of – yeah, these aren't necessarily my people. Yeah. And that doesn't yeah. mean we can't be friends yeah. or like can't like hang out and be nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you, you just have to be ready for that and be aware that that's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. I mean, all of our ragtag teams from the very beginning when we first moved here, like some of them are our best friends now and yeah. some of them are not, you know. Yeah. So. And just approaching, I feel like it just all comes back to me for knowing like knowing yourself and mm-hmm. and being yeah. okay that like, okay, I'm going to be okay if they reject me because yeah. I, my identity is in the belovedness of Christ. Yeah. And I'm going to bring that into every friendship that I either have or don't have. And even mm-hmm. if this dinner or whatever it is, is ragtag and it turns into nothing and I feel super rejected at the end, I am still the beloved of Christ. And I can yeah. walk into and love that person from here until eternity. And I can keep putting myself out there because mm-hmm. that's what Jesus did. He pursued people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He did. And he yeah. did it at the, like at the most extreme cost. Yeah. Rejection. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And did it knowingly, like yeah. mm-hmm. knowing full well, like mm-hmm. this is not an, if they're going to reject me, like they are going yeah. to reject me. Yeah. yeah that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. Maria, talk to me about identity too, because I remember you telling me about when you were moving here to Fort Worth and you were going through a transition. And so it was, Figuring out how to fully be present here. Yeah, yeah. So I came into the residency, which we started in August, mm-hmm, right? right? Yeah. Of 23, 22. This is 23. Oh, so my 20. gosh. Right. This 22? is 23? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Time That's is weird. Funny. Okay. <laughs> so actually, don't put that in there. <laughs> Anyways, um, I came into the residency and I was in a long distance relationship and, um, I, I think I just was so forward thinking the whole time I, we were, I was in a really serious relationship. So we were just kind of like talking about marriage and what does that look like and blah, blah, blah. And I, and then I felt the Lord called me here and I was like, what the heck? I was not expecting that. And, um, I, came here, came to seminary and was like, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Why am I doing this? And my parents were like, please don't go. Why are you leaving? I was like, I don't know. So like, I just feel like I need to do this. And okay. Also caveat, when I say that I felt called here, I don't mean like some kind of voice of from heaven came down and was like, you're going here. Mm. No, it was just one of those things where I was working at a church and I felt like I needed to grow more. And I didn't really know how to do that or what that looked like. And so I started 
talking to my bosses and things weren't really panning out there. And then I started applying for jobs and then just every door shut until this one opened. And I, for some reason, felt really drawn to it. And I was Mm. like, that is the weirdest thing because why am I leaving my job to do a residency? Right. Mm. That makes no sense. Yeah. So anyways, I just felt really drawn to it and thought, I need think I need to go. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so I came and my whole first semester, I was basically living like one foot here in Fort Worth and one foot in Houston and trying to balance back and forth of trying to be like thinking about the future, planning for the future. And I was just thinking ahead a lot, you know, and, um, and then me and the guy that I was dating broke up and I was like, I, the weirdest part about the breakup, it was, it was like a decent breakup. Also decent breakup. Caveat. I mean, no, I mean, (laughs) breakups aren't good, but also caveat. I feel like there is a narrative of Christian women of like, you either date this guy, he's really holy and good for you and you marry him. Mm. Or it was a really horrible relationship and you weren't glorifying the Lord. Mm. That's not what happened with us. (laughs) Yeah. We very much like had a healthy relationship for the most part, you know? And, um, and I really do feel, I never felt like I like didn't glorify the Lord yeah, or didn't yeah. honor myself or honor him. Yeah. And so it was a pretty, like, as far as breakups go, it was a pretty decent split. But yeah. so anyways, if you're a girl out there and you're kind of afraid <laughs> that you're like <laughs> not honoring the Lord or whatever, chill. It's okay. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's totally fine. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you can be a normal person yeah. and be a Christian woman yeah. in a exactly. relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I just feel like both of us kind of just felt called to different places. It yeah. wasn't this yeah. like big thing. And so both of us honored the Lord in that way. I don't mm-hmm. know. Anyways, that's a caveat. I, I feel <laughs> as if I have been made better and look more like Jesus because of my relationship with him. I do not feel any kind of, mm. any type of way about it. Anyways, we broke up and I felt like I was rediscovering myself, not mm. because like of anything he did or a way that I like put my identity in him. I feel like my identity was still in Christ the whole time. Mm-hmm. It just, I just was so forward thinking and was thinking about the future and I was never really present anywhere. Mm. And so When like my other leg got cut off and now I'm both like both feet in Fort Worth, I was like, what do I do? You know, Mm -hmm. and I noticed like the very first thing that I noticed from the breakup was that I was like fully myself again. Like I almost like came alive and it again, it had nothing to do with him. It was just I was finally living presently Mm -hmm. and I didn't have to worry about anything else. And I was like, "Okay, what does tomorrow bring? You know, what is the next day bring? You know, so I, I and one of the things I noticed was like. I'm a very creative person and I had kind of stopped creating because of a myriad of reasons of, I was just in a really stressful situation before. And now I was in Fort Worth trying to figure myself out. And I would like, for example, I have this little diffuser and I broke it and it's like this clay little thing. And my first thought, instead of being like, Oh no, now I have to clean up this mess. And what am I going to do? Like, I was like, Oh my gosh, I have glass bottles that I could break up and make in a mosaic for it. And I was like, that's so crazy. I haven't had these thoughts in so long. Like Mm. I hadn't really thought creatively or like really opened my mind up to that. So Mm. um, that is kind of, I think, spring semester of the residency or the second semester, I guess, Mm. was one of the ways that I really feel like I kind of came into myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Just like circumstances drove me here. And it was kind of, and I came here very much trusting the Lord. I had no means of necessarily provision. And I always yeah. tell people like my, dr- my dramatic thing to say is that I have nothing after this residency. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is it. You know, I'm like, I'm here to get my degree and it's such a cool opportunity and everything, but I don't really know what the heck I'm going to do. You know, yeah. I don't know what my life's going to look like. And I just trust that the Lord brought me here and I trust that the Lord's going to take care of me. And yeah. I think I finally got in that mode where I stopped worrying about the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like fully present somewhere. And then I started thinking like myself Mm, and I started being like myself. And so that I think it was cool to be able to process that with Sammy too, the whole time, because we're having similar issues of like identity. Mm. And and it's like, she's becoming more comfortable with herself of like, oh, and I'm like, like learning who I am. You know, and I was like, whoa. (laughs) Yeah. So it was cool to like, walk through that together, I think, and talk about it and process it. And even though it was very different Mm -hmm. perspectives and very different ways of thinking. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Maria always encourages me that like she never is trying to make me into her. She always Mm -hmm. is like, I feel like she's always trying to encourage me to be more of who God made me to be Mm -hmm. and just, and just live more vulnerably and live more Mm -hmm. like authentically. And that is just always 
such an encouragement to me of like, we don't have to look more like each other, yeah. but we can struggle with these same things and mm -hmm. and push more towards being each person more 100% who yes. God made mm -hmm. them to be. You yeah, know? I feel the same way. Yeah, I've never felt like, I think a lot of times, and I don't know if anybody else has felt this, like that's really creative, but um, I think a lot of times there's kind of this like, oh, you got to bridle yourself, you know, <laughs> like mm. you got to like <laughs> whip into shape, you know, <laughs> like oh get better, get more organized, be better, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I have like, and I've never felt that from Sammy. I've never felt like she's been like, you need to, you really need to get your stuff together, you mm -hmm. know? But she's just been like encouraging me as a person and I see her and and I go, wow, like I see the benefits of that. And not that I'm like totally crazy disorganized or anything, but it's just things about Sammy push me to like find stuff about myself, mm -hmm. not like yeah. become like her. I'm yeah. not trying to be more organized because right. Sammy's organized. Mm -hmm. Or it's not like Sammy fills some kind of organizational role in my life where I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I couldn't do my life without Sammy because Sammy does all my organization. No, yeah, not right. at all. That's true. You know, yeah. it's like we're pushing each other to look at how God's wired us and how God's made us. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and we're being okay with the differences and yeah. being like, yeah, you know, yeah. and sometimes they clash like mm, a lot, sure. you know, <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've had a lot of those where we're like, oh my gosh, we clash, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. but those aren't ever things mm. that stop us from embracing ourselves. I feel. Yeah. yeah. The first time we ever figured out that we tell stories differently oh, yeah. was like, mm -hmm. I mean, Maria is a great storyteller, okay? <laughs> She's like awesome, funny, engaging. I'm like the most boring storyteller ever. That is not, not true. true. No, yeah, it's that's not, not true. true. Okay, but, but it's okay. It I'll allow it for the drama of the story. <laughs> <laughs> What's life without a little drama? <laughs> <laughs> but we found out that like I am very detail oriented and she's like telling a story of how he like met this person at a coffee shop or whatever and she's like oh we were there for almost an hour and we went to Cherry and I was like um we were there for 30 minutes and we went to Crude so <laughs> and I was like you're lying when you're telling the story yeah. <laughs> we we had this whole okay so something you should know about us we're both in seminary obviously yeah. and we're both pretty deep thinkers yeah. so we will like analyze every Everything. situation Situation. We Every love a good one. debrief. Oh yeah, about yeah, we're all something. about it. Hilarious with your debriefs. I yes. love it. Yes, yes. we, we debrief, debrief everything. everything. <laughs> yeah, I need to know like what you were thinking in a social yeah. situation. Especially, it makes it much more interesting because we're so different, and we we will view things very differently. Yeah. So, like for example, that story that that we were talking about, where I'm like, oh, we talked with this person for like my whole like my motive in that is. I am talking about the person that we ran into. Yes. And I think it's important that we talk about how I got to know that person. Yeah. So I don't care where it was, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I'm I like, what? You know? I want to yes. know. And, and it needs like to be right objectively. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we talked about that. And even like when we were talking about it, because Sammy was like, you're lying. I was like, what in the world are you talking about? You know? <laughs> and we even talked about like the idea of lying and what that yeah. is and why we think this and blah, blah. And it was so interesting because, um, and then of course, we're theology. Nerd. So it brought mm -hmm. us back to the Gospels where yeah, we were like, sure. we were like, well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell the same story in different yeah. ways. And there are some parts that like fit and don't fit and yeah. whatever, you know. And like, it's not that it contradicts itself ever. And it's not that it's totally different stories. It's just different perspectives. Right. So our debriefs are always really interesting yes. because we see things very differently. Yeah. And we kind of lean on each other and each other's strengths while we're like talking about stuff, you know, yeah. and like analyzing everything because I'm like, oh, if I don't, it's almost kind of like, oh, I don't necessarily remember that, but like Sammy will probably remember that. So I'll ask her about it later. You know, yeah. <laughs> like mm -hmm. we ran into someone and I'm like, hey, I don't remember what they do, mm -hmm. you know, and Sammy's yeah. going to know exactly what they do yeah. and how they feel about it and what they're thinking about, mm -hmm. what their dream job is and mm -hmm. all this, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's always a party over at Barnes Drive. <laughs> <laughs> it is always a party. How long will we all debrief this? Ooh, oh, on the car so ride long. home. So long. It's going to be <laughs> such a long debrief. Ooh, I can't oh wait. <laughs> I love debriefing. <laughs> This is yeah, so great. it is fun. It's if if you haven't tried it, you should really try. Oh it. Okay. yeah, you should really try debriefing. It's really helpful. I think it's it, my yeah. love language. I really do. I love debriefing. Your oddly specific love language. It is. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I believe it. So I believe it. Okay, let's talk for a minute about the elephant in the room mm. because y'all y'all have danced around this idea that like yes, there's differences and you th you see things from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And listener, if you're like me and you're like 
wow, that sounds a lot like conflict to me. Mm-hmm. You might be right. Because it is. Yeah. Sometimes it's conflict. <laughs> yeah. And if you're anything like me, you're like, oh gosh, conflict. Yeah. Sh- run away. Um, because that's what I like to do with conflict in my sin. Uh-huh. I don't like to deal with it. But that is not the healthy and appropriate way to deal with it. And yeah. <laughs> for those of us who are not as accustomed to it, please shed some light on what conflict looks like in a healthy and Christ-centered relationship. Well, I'll s- stop you there and say, <laughs> I was and say, say the same thing. I don't know <laughs> if we should be the example. No, for <laughs> sure not. <laughs> but we can tell you how we've messed up or what we do, uh-huh. and maybe you can learn something from it. Know. Yeah, but we definitely, go. I don't think, I don't think either of us would say we have that like handled, but no. <laughs> yeah, we're always learning and growing. Yeah. yeah. I feel like one of our, like, I guess our most prominent, conflicts or like early on, I guess Mm -hmm. I should say is we, (laughs) so Sammy is really prompt. Like she has a certain, like she, she has a whole like morning routine and like, you know, well, actually, I don't know why I'm speaking for you. Go ahead and tell them. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Yes. I'm a morning, I'm a big morning person and you should know I used to be a nurse before I came into the residency. So Mm -hmm. in nursing, being on time is being an hour early. Like yes. legitimately, mm-hmm. like you have to be there beforehand to get report, you mm-hmm. know, so that's kind of where I'm walking into this. And yeah. it was literally like our first week, I think, of residency. Yes. So it was like, okay. And we used to drive everywhere together. Yeah. And we were driving yeah. together because our, we live, we live kind of far and our schedules were exactly the same. Yes. So we were going to all the same meetings. We were living together. Yeah. We, I mean, had barely really met. I mean, we were yeah, living we, together. Yeah, we met like the month mm-hmm. before. Yeah. And like went and lived on our own <laughs> and then came back. So. <laughs> and I used to live alone before I lived yeah. with Maria. And something about me, mm-hmm. my morning routine looks like I get up maybe 30 minutes before I have to go mm-hmm. because if I don't like budget my time that way, I'll get distracted. Yeah. Like if I get up an hour early, I'm like, oh, I have time to do these things. And then I just start like cleaning whatever or yeah. doing whatever or start some pr- project mm-hmm. and then I'm late still. So mm-hmm. I've just kind of budgeted out of like as much, exactly the amount of time that I need yeah. is exactly the amount of time I take and I take no more because I'll I'll just do everything under the yeah. sun at the at the house, especially. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that stresses me out. I need like I just want to putz around in the morning. I want to, you know, walk around. I hate being stressed out in the morning and mm-hmm. just, like rushing to get somewhere. I'm like, this is gonna ruin my whole day. Yeah. So we're, we're so picture this me, <laughs> yes. us two this together, is our first week together. trying <laughs> to drive together to get to work, and I'm and like, we like trying to save on gas, trying to be responsible. Yeah, so like, right. we're kind of a little little bit stuck in this situation <laughs> of like yeah. we're doing every single thing together from mm-hmm. this day forward yeah. like at least for this semester because yeah. of the residency schedule yeah. so yeah. <laughs> totally and I was super frustrated because I felt like we were always leaving late and we were and but <laughs> yeah. I, that's that's not an exaggeration <laughs> but my idea was also oh I want to be 10 minutes early right. you know that's mm-hmm. on time to right. me and so anyway we kind of had a conflict about that and yeah. I, I don't even remember really what happened other than I think you could tell that I was frustrated. Yeah, so, so well, it started we out talked like, about it. I feel like I had pretty good discernment mm-hmm. of like social situations for the most part. So I could just tell she was stressed. And I was like, I don't understand. You got up early and mm-hmm. you had your little time to like chill and stuff. Yeah. And so I was kind of like, oh, she's stressed out. And then we finally talked about it. Um, and this is all within like the first week, but yeah, and I mean, again, it's like a period of like three days. Yeah. yeah. We're and doing it's kind of hard because you like, just know you just met this person. Right. <laughs> you don't want to be like, Hey, uh, so we're talking about it. And basically like we get in the car one day and we're like, okay. And Sammy was like, I really want us to be on time. Mm-hmm. Like I really want to leave at the right time and we need to leave by like, I'm, I think it was like, I don't, I'm just going to make up a time, whatever. Yeah. We need to leave by eight 30 so we can be there by nine, you know? Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, we live 20 minutes away. We'll right. just and leave. in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, there's traffic. If yes. we're not in the car by 8.30, mm-hmm. we're not getting yeah. there by yeah. 9 o'clock. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, we could just leave at 8.40, you know? <laughs> so mm-hmm. we're like, we're kind of going through this. And it's funny because, you know, you would think it would be one conversation. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to be ready earlier and move on. Yeah. But then we realized we have a very different idea of what leaving means. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we started it's out, true. I was like, hey, we'll leave at 8.30. No big deal. Yeah. So 8.30 comes around. I'm putting on my backpack. I'm getting out. No. I'm walking out yeah. to the car Leaving and everything. means in the car, <laughs> pulling, out, pulling of the out of the driveway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we have very different like ideas of it. So I'm getting it. I'm like, you're so frustrated. <laughs> like, what's going on? You know? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, because we said we we're going to leave at 830. And I was like, yeah. 
I I'm going to say 30. Like, yeah, <laughs> started the leaving process. Yeah, at you know? And it's like, it's just funny. It's just one of those things we laugh about now because we're like, and it's small. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, and you know, but, but it's, it's one of those things that could fester. I mean, if we yes, never would have mm-hmm. talked about it until the end of the semester, it would have yes. been this whole mm-hmm. big thing. Like, we never leave on time. Maria is always late, yes. yada, uh-huh. yada. Mm-hmm. But it, it wasn't. We talked about it in the beginning. Yeah. We both had like, Maria's like, I'm not going to get up any earlier. Like, yeah. this is my mm-hmm. schedule and I'm going to do that. And I was like, okay. And I don't want to leave later than we leave. So, and yeah. we, you know, just talked about it and worked through it. And mm-hmm. I think we're both very honest, <laughs> yeah. sometimes yeah. painstakingly. Mm-hmm. But I think that that <laughs> has helped us in the long run because yeah. in those mm-hmm. conflict conversations that I could be really nervous to be like, oh, I don't want to say this really hard thing. But in the long run, if you say it and you mean it and mm-hmm. like there's a com- mutual commitment to, okay, we both love Christ. We both love each other. We both yeah. want to serve the other person. So we're going to make it work and we're going to work through this and we're going to talk about it. And then we're mm-hmm. like going to move on. Like we're yeah, not going right. to fester about it. Yeah. We're not going to keep bringing it up. Like we're going to move on. And yeah. we really did. Yeah. And it was one of those things where like we didn't mm-hmm. like it, that's not like one conversation that we had and then it was just done within that week. It was yeah. like, it was kind of like a two-ish week process of like, what should we do? Maybe we should drive separate. Maybe yeah. we should do that. You know, like where we explored pretty much anything we possibly could mm-hmm. because, and it was, again, it wasn't like anything huge and right. it could have just festered, right. but festering leads to making judgment calls on Sammy as a person yeah. instead of Sammy's actions. Yeah. And that's when things get like weird. And same with Sammy, like festering will lead to her making judgment calls on me as a person yeah. instead of my actions you know mm-hmm. and so when we talk about our actions it's easy to kind of put your actions out there like away from your person you mm-hmm. know like mm-hmm. and say this is these are the things that I'm doing and this is who I am yeah. and like and if you recognize that you're you're a sinner yeah. Who is yeah. in need of a savior yeah. and like oh I'm probably thinking about this totally differently you know because yeah. one of the things again honesty helped us but also just like question asking yeah, of, yeah it, that's good. it was like when we got in the car and I'm going, I don't understand. We're leaving at eight 30. Like mm-hmm. we're, you know, and Sammy's like, no, it's eight 31 now, you know? And I was like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, I did everything you asked, you know, yeah, like, I right. don't understand, you know, That's like, good. cause then that instead, when you're asking questions, it stops it from like feeling squashed yeah. or me squashing her or accusations. Being, yes. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so it's things like that, that help mm-hmm. in that kind of situation. I feel mm-hmm. like, but again, this took us like a while to figure out because yeah. we were like, okay, we don't want to like, we're, I mean, it was a, it was a rub for a while because yeah. we were like, we don't want to, like, I'm not trying to make Sammy late, you right, know, right. and I'm not trying to make her stressed out because like, I, that's not ever my intention, but yeah. also like, I'm not going to like totally change the whole way I like get ready in the morning yeah. and I'm not going right. to ask her to do that either. Yeah. You know? right. Like, right. right. So I feel like that, um, that kind of stuff of like holding your ground of like who you are and how you do things and also like loving and caring about the other person and being like, what can I compromise on? What can I not, you yeah. know, right. is yeah, right. really helpful. And I think to just having the humility to even in other conflicts that we've had of like, Oh, apologize. And recognize Mm -hmm. when you're wrong. And we've both had to do that at different times Mm -hmm. and just have the humility almost to be like, you know what? I really did wrong you in that. And this thing Mm -hmm. that I said was really hurtful and I'm really sorry. Yeah. And I think having that, and I just think having a view of conflict that we're not necessarily scared of it. Like yeah. neither one of us, I think, really love it. Mm-hmm. But like no, we're n- no one does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> but but we are not afraid of it. And mm-hmm. it, it's I think people sometimes are really afraid of having conflict. But I would even argue that some of those conflicts have made us better and have mm-hmm. made us closer and and have we've learned more about ourselves and each other in yeah. them. Mm-hmm. But just having the the willingness and the transparency even to be honest and then to mm-hmm. to apologize if like you're wrong yeah. you know because mm-hmm. there yeah. are and there are situations where we both apologize and we're like yeah. you know i i was wrong in this and i'm like yeah i was wrong in this too and mm-hmm. I, and i think that has really helped yeah. us kind of navigate along the way yeah it's like owning your sin like yeah mm-hmm. because it you know i mean there have been times where we leave arguments or whatever and then we're like both angry and whatever. Yeah. And um, and it's easy to just go back and be really angry about the other person's sin, you know? Yeah. yeah because yeah. you see it really clearly. Mm-hmm. And then, But it's harder to take a minute to be like, wait, where's my stuff in this? Yeah. You know, and like, what yeah. did I do? Mm-hmm. And then like owning up to that and not yeah. taking on somebody else's and be like, oh, you know, right. yeah. but to take on your own and be like, you know what? It doesn't matter if my sin is smaller or if my sin is bigger yep. or whatever. Yep. Sin is sin. And yep. it put Jesus on the cross. 
And yes. it, it, I, it deserves an apology and it deserves repentance yeah. in some way. And not just to the Lord, but also to the people around you because it does shape your relationships in some way yeah, too, you know? That's so, so good. When you apologize, it, it really does. It, yes. It's almost kind of like, I don't expect Sammy to be perfect and never hurt my feelings. Yeah. But like when Sammy owns that, it, it allows for a repair to happen. Mm. If if it doesn't happen that way and vice versa, like when I own my own sin, there's a repair that can yeah. happen then. Yeah. But if we don't do that, then we're just going to be stuck in this kind of awkward rift and it'll just yeah. get slowly bigger. So Yeah. And I think something that Maria has taught me and has helped me realize is that we're both even though we're having conflict, the Holy Spirit lives in Maria just as much as the Holy Spirit lives in me. And so I don't need to act as the Holy Spirit and like point out her sin all the time. Like I can trust that he's working in her and she, I trust that she's submitted to him and she's going to listen. And if he Mm -hmm. is convicting her of something that he's going to bring that up in her. And it's not maybe Mm -hmm. always my job to be like, telling her that. Right. But it is my job to listen to the Holy Spirit in my own life and be like, oh, there is sin in my life that needs addressing and <laughs> let me apologize for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Wow. Uh-huh. I didn't know I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit. That, yeah, it that was, was not me. That was the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I keep bringing this back to women in the Word because I just had a meeting about it, but we we're talking about like when David is contrite over his sin and how like mm-hmm. – his immediate, not his immediate, one of the responses he had was like thinking about how his sin impacted like the nation that yeah. he was in charge mm, of, right? Yeah. And how like his sphere of influence was very vast and yeah. his sin like really impacted the people yeah. that he was in charge of, right? Yep. And so he knew that and like, and knowing that he took it to the Lord and asked for protection over those people, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking about it in terms of like, okay, I am not a king. Yeah. And I don't have a whole nation underneath me, but for yeah. sure my sin impacts the people around yeah. me. Oh, yeah. yeah. And having mm-hmm. a willingness like David did to say like, okay, Lord, against you and you alone have I sinned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my sin that is against you yeah. will also impact the people that are in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a willingness to not only be like – confessing to the Lord and asking for a repair in that relationship, like knowing, knowing that Christ died. Yeah. Having yeah. the confidence yeah. of that. And also the humility to say like, oh, Lord, my sin also probably hurt this other person. Yeah. And mm-hmm. protect them, Lord. Yeah. And let me make that repair that you're talking mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. like to humbly yeah. ask for forgiveness. Yeah. And sometimes it can't, like, I mean, you know, you never know. Sometimes that kind of stuff, like it just needs space and it needs time to breathe and whatever. Mm-hmm. But you also just have to trust that God is in control and mm-hmm. is sovereign and that like that he he takes care of his church. He yes. takes care of his people. And even if like that relationship is never like completely reconciled or repaired or whatever, right. you have to trust that God is like somebody else can be the church to them. Still, yes. You know, yeah. and somebody else can be the church to you too. You know, yeah. I love one of my professors always says that like David being a man after God's own heart is not this posture of like, oh, he had something special about him or whatever. It was that like, he just kept following God. Mm -hmm. Like he would mess up and he'd get right back up and he'd chase after God. Mm -hmm. And there was no other God that he tried to follow. He Mm -hmm. just followed God. And I thought like, I just, I want to be known that way. Not just yeah. like, oh, like I have some kind of special thing in me that like allows me to be the man after, or like a woman after God's heart, you know. Yeah. But like, I want to be the person that gets back up and says, okay, Lord, like you mm-hmm. knew I was going to make this, this mistake. You knew this sin in me was going to like really hurt these other people. Yeah. Yeah. You already took care of it beforehand. How do you want me to react to yeah. this? Yeah. What, how, what do I do? Does that mean I go and apologize to them? Yeah. Does that mean, you know, like what, what are my next steps and how do I best glorify you? Mm-hmm. Not try and repair things because I feel like sometimes we get kind of people pleasy about it. Yeah. We're like, oh, it's only okay if that person forgives me and we move on, you know, yeah. sometimes it's too, it's too deep. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it hits a nerve with somebody. It may even be something small, but yeah. it hits a nerve with them. And we just have to allow the Lord to be God in their life and yep. mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit to guide them and to heal them and to take care of them and to take care of us as well, you know, and yep. know that my goal is to glorify God with my whole being, yeah, not to be good with everybody around me yeah. and everybody, have everybody like me yeah. or whatever that is. You and know? that brings it back to what we talked about earlier, the rejection, the identity. I mean, it all comes back to yeah. that. And knowing that your, your relationship with the Lord 
is the only thing that matters. I mean, mm -hmm. you your identity and your rejection is not based upon these other horizontal relationships, and yeah. whether or not you're good with everyone. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we should live at peace with all men and mm -hmm. wherever possible. And you can restore those. God is always mm -hmm. for restoration, but sometimes that's not always possible. And if yep. it's not, are you still good with the Lord? Mm -hmm. And are you and him still on the same page? And are mm -hmm. you submitted and listening to what he is telling you to do rather yeah. than being good with the person next to you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're going to wrap up in just a few minutes, but there are a couple of questions that I still wanted to ask you. So we've, we've talked about like that vulnerability, having the identity of being secure who we are in Christ. Y'all have been learning this like I keep forgetting that y'all have been in residency for like a year and a half because it feels like, <laughs> oh, they've had like 20 yeah. years to develop this friendship. And <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> wisdom about this. But. Okay. So if you look back over the last like 18 months or so, like since you've been here and have been looking through different lenses, like what has changed in your perspective or your theology about being the new person in the room or like mm. seeing people mm. and meeting them where they are? And specifically, I also want you to talk about A table and B table. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> we always okay, A table and B table. <laughs> like, is or is that the is that a post-credit thing? A team and B team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah. We're yeah, keeping this. This okay. is not them. So, okay, this is a, a term that we've coined ourselves. <laughs> like, what you'll learn about us is that we coin a lot of terms. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things we talked about is when we would go into these new social situations yep. and you walk in and you're like thinking this is all going to be fun. And then you, you see the clear divide Very of like clearly. A team, B team, yep. A table, B table. Yep. And, and we are always at B table. Always. No. Yep. Yes. Uh -huh. No, we are. No. And but you it's know good. Yeah. We want to be at B table. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? B table always has fun because <laughs> well, we're sitting there. It depends. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of part of what we get at is like when it doesn't really matter what table you're at or whatever, but right. there's clearly kind of a divide. You know, you see everybody kind of click yep. up and whatever. Yep. Yeah. And it has the same exact feeling as when you walk into like a high school cafeteria oh, yeah. and it just Ooh. kind of like you never grow out of it, I guess. Yep. I don't yeah. know. We're learning that. We're only like in our mid-20s. So like, It doesn't go away. Yeah. yeah. I was like, so, okay, yeah. well, so far We're always it, our junior here. high selves. <laughs> when you don't ever grow out of junior high. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what I'm learning. Yeah. So anyways, we always talk about how like we typically are at the B table for the most part and especially being the new person yeah you're just automatically to the b table it yeah. just kind of happens you know and it's nothing personal it's yeah. just the way things are <laughs> sure. you know but we always have realized that like when we're at the b table i think sammy and i just slowly learned this but like we just kind of made it our home you mm -hmm. know we just yeah. kind of started inviting people in and that was our goal was like let's just have fun here you know well like, Correction. Maria's really good at this. I was like so bitter. And I, was, oh I would walk into this and I would be like, I do. I'm not at the A table. I'm not interested. We're just the like nerds at the B table. And I was like, it had such a bad attitude about it. And I feel like honestly, Maria has taught me that. No, it's not about being at the A table or the B table. It is inviting other people. Well, first of all, yeah, making B to your home and making mm -hmm. and having fun and inviting and saying, okay, mm -hmm. there are other people at B table that, that right feel now, it. They know they're at B table too. Yeah. <laughs> but and right now we have the control to help them not feel lonely left out. and yeah. left out. And we have we mm -hmm. have direct control over that of helping them feel included and mm -hmm. And having a good time where they can walk out say, saying, I feel mm -hmm. seen, known, and loved because of the girls at B-Table. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And every single person there has that ability. And at the same time, yeah. like, I feel like the pattern that we've kind of run into is like, we're, we're at B-Table. And then all of a sudden, people are like, well, I want to be at B-Table. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, they're laughing. Because we and have they're having fun. fun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> at B-Table. And, so, and, and the best part about it is that then you get to turn to those people at the A-Table and be like, you can come too. Like, yeah. there are yeah. seats here. And we want you here. It's yeah. not just a, like, we don't want you, you know? Yeah. And I think that, like... I know Sammy always is kind of like down on herself about the whole like she notices the difference and it's like, yeah. no, I want to be at a table. But I do think that there is something good about that recognition of being like, it's not really supposed to be that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we should walk in. I think sometimes I get a little too used to it 
where I'm like, oh, we're all going to kind of split up and whatever. Mm. And then, you know, and then the whole pattern's going to happen where we're going to start having fun and blah, blah, mm. you know. But like coming into a room and being like, it's not supposed to look like this. This yeah. is not... This is not the people of God. No, you know, right. this is not what this looks like. Yeah. Is important to hold on to in that kind of again, it moves you towards compassion to people. Yeah. Because again, they they see B table and they want to be a part of B table, yeah. you know? And then you get to say, Yeah, you you too. I yeah. want you here. You yeah. know? Yeah. And um, and other people start to do that. And that's yeah. like, oh my gosh, that's the best part is that it only takes one person to start setting that kind of culture. Mm. Like if you come in and me and Sammy are here and we're like, you know what? I want these girls around me to feel cared for. Yeah. Then they start wanting to care about everybody else too. Yeah. And it's been on rare occasions, I feel like we've run into people where we come to B table and there are other girls that are on the same like page as us. And yeah. we're like, <gasps> you get it. You know, yeah. like you felt the exclusivity, you felt the rejection and you want to do something about it too. Yeah. And, um, and again, the whole goal is that we're just one big table. Yeah. You know, yeah. ideally that's what happens is that maybe though know, there's some kind of accidental and sometimes it's not on purpose. And yeah. most of the time it's not on purpose, right. honestly. Right. Like there are very rare occasions where that happen, but there's very rare occasions where it's just somebody who's mean, you know, mm, like yes. most yeah. of the time it's out of fear and out yeah. of like, I yep. know these other people. So I'm just going to stay around these other people because they're the only people I know. Yeah. And I don't exactly. really want to meet anybody yep. new. I'm scared, yep. you know? And that's hard for me sometimes because I can get cynical and critical and be like, oh, these freaking A girls are just <laughs> are trying to leave me out and they're so cool and I'm just so uncool. You know, but it's not that, but it is really fear. It goes back to what we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. It's fear of this yeah. rejection, fear of this insecurity. And if mm -hmm. you can recognize that and invite them in too. And yeah. I mean, that's what Jesus did, you know, he and did. that mm -hmm. is the gospel that it is radically inclusive and everybody has a seat at this table mm -hmm. and inviting them and saying, no, you can sit right here next to me too. Yeah. Right. That mm -hmm. I mean, he invited these people and he included them. And, yeah. and then, you know, making these little disciples that go out and be like, oh, I can invite people to my table too. And yes. invite and them. And they do in. it in other realms. Like yes. that's, yes. that's like right. the idea is that everywhere you go, you're, you're like embracing the possibility of rejection, you yeah. know, yeah. because like, I always like try to think of it of like, as this big like game, you know, mm. you have to get back out there at some point and you can take a minute and like go to the sidelines and like heal from your rejection. Sure. It hurts. Yep. You Eat should a cookie, take watch a Hallmark movie <laughs> and then, do whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and but you've got to get back out there. there. You've yep. got to, That's because great. the hope of the gospel is still there. We've got to tell people that they're yep. welcome mm -hmm. and they don't know. And they're covered in fear the same way that you are. Yeah. And if you're not bold enough or brave enough to do it, then who will do it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. God's specially placed you in yeah. this place to do that for people to yeah. go out there, you know, and, and realizing that that is out of the place, out of that place of being loved and cared for and accepted is the place that we invite other people into yeah. that, yep. that it's out of knowing that and being secure in that, that mm -hmm. Jesus did that for me. Yep. So mm -hmm. I get to go out and do that for other people and say, mm -hmm. Hey, Jesus does this for you too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come uh, that there's a misconception that you have to actually be secure in yourself. Yeah. But you just have to believe that God matters to you. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that your identity That's comes good. in there. You can come forward and they can come into your space and you can be like, I'm just really holding on to the belief that my identity is in Christ. Yeah. But like, I kind of don't like myself. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. I'm having a really hard time with that. Yep. Because most of the time, the response you're going to get is, me too. Me too. Yep. Yeah. I'm having a really hard time with that. You know? Yep. Yep. Like, I feel the same way. And there's nobody vulnerable enough to say it. You yep. know? Yep. So you can be that person for people. Yeah. And every single person can do that. And you can do that for other people. And you can start inviting people into spaces yeah. that are like, this is me choosing to believe that God is my identity, that yep. mm. who I am rests in him. And I, I, he, like you said, like he's made a place for me yeah. and I don't really know why. And I feel really undeserving. And, yeah. but I want you to feel the same kind of acceptance and love that I have. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yep. That's so good. That's mm. beautiful. Okay. We're going to end on that because I just can't fathom anything better. So you guys have been incredible. And I think mm. two to the glory of God, like the way that he has like grown you both closer to him and closer to each other and like use that as a platform to bring other people into like a deeper relationship with him is mm. beautiful. And mm. so I'm really grateful that you guys came on today mm. and shared that with us, with me and with you listeners. So listener, if you want to be in contact with Sammy and Maria, we'll make sure that you have a way to do that in the show notes. And you should 
Because yeah, please come get coffee with us. It'd be fun. <gasps> oh my gosh. We love friends. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> please be our friend. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to have so many coffee dates after this. Oh my <gasps> No, don't don't tease. Don't play us like that. My heart can't handle it. (laughs) Um, Okay, I'm going to praise God for what he's done. And then we're going to close out. Mm -hmm. Lord, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. And we praise you for being a God who gives us community. You have given us um, not only acceptance into your family, you've given us an inheritance because of your son, Jesus Christ. And we praise you for that. And we praise you that we get to be part of this body that worships you and brings you glory. Help us to reach out um, to anybody that is near to us. Um, with the hope of the gospel, because that is what we have to offer. You've given it to us, so help us to give it away to others um, and help us to do it in boldness, knowing that you love us deeply and perfectly and that when we fail and when we are weak and when we are hurt, you are a constant presence in our life that heals us and moves us in obedience to love the people that you put in our lives. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for listening. For more episodes, be sure to follow Encouraged and Equipped.